Hi, I'm Clark from Temptress. I've been known as a guy that knows a bit about charging batteries. I've developed something called the Bank Manager, which lets you bring lithium into your existing lead-based system. Well, people always ask me, Clark, what lithium batteries should I buy? It's like a lot of people are asking me this, and I was totally unprepared to answer. Well, I did a little looking around because I needed a lithium battery for that camper trip we took. I bought this, the cheapest battery I could find that looked decent. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. So you go shopping for something and you find the cheapest one. Should you buy it? You know, very often that's a mistake. Well, basically this was the cheapest one and I bought it. Was it a mistake? Let's find out. Okay, I bought this battery because I needed another lithium iron phosphate battery for a camper I was setting up for that trip we took. And I looked at, and technically there's, they were just like one or two that were cheaper, but they had 50 amp BMSs. They had, well, they just smelled wrong from the ad, but this one seemed right. It had a uh, hundred amp BMS. It had low temperature shut off, which is, important for some people. Uh, I'll get into that more later because it's kind of a strange one. Um, it makes a claim to a high number of cycles. It claims it's using automotive grade cells. And I like that because this A cell, B cell thing, that's a marketing term. But in China, all cells are made for automotive. And the ones that don't pass muster are considered B cells. And the fact that they use the word automotive made me think maybe that marketing stuff was written by an engineer, not so much a marketing guy. So I decided to take a shot at it. And I bought, um, well, I bought one. Uh, also some friends who were asking me, you know, what should I buy? They bought some. I've got one friend that has six of these and he hasn't complained. Uh, I now own two of these. The first one we put in the truck camper, we had one 100 amp, exactly like this, battery in that camper, and it was really ample for our needs. It'd be nice to have more, as it always is with batteries. Not so much to make it through a night, but we camped in dense forests sometime and had no solar, so, you know, having more battery is better. Um, it did a good job. So, I wanted to present it to you guys as what I think is probably a decent deal. Oh, how much is it? Um, last I checked, it's still just slightly under $300 delivered. It's actually got a lower price on it, but if you read the small print, you'll see that there is a shipping cost that brings it up to like $290 or something. Uh, at that price for a 100 amp hour battery, that would be great if it works the way it should work. We ran the one on the camper now for, uh, well, three active months of camping, and we've had it a little bit longer, and it's parked in the yard right now, still working. We never plug it into anything. Solar panels and this battery take care of everything. Um, I got this one from a friend who bought a whole bunch of them to do a conversion of an electric boat, um, a Duffy. And it's a 36 volt electric launch, it's a pretty cool boat. I'll probably do a video on it because we're putting one of my bank manager systems into it. Uh, he ended up with four of these, but for 36 volts, he only needed three. Um, it becomes a long story, but I designed some circuitry for him that made him not need this one. So I ended up with it. And I decided to do a review on this and show it. So this particular battery has been deeply discharged, probably on the order of 10 times from full charge down at a pretty fast rate, like 40 amps, um, in a pushing a, a rather large uh, electric boat around. So it's not a brand new battery. I don't do unboxing videos. I won't talk about something that I don't have some reason to say that I know it works. What should we do to talk about it? Well, it uh, has a claim of a fairly high cycle life, but that's a claim. Most anything you see written on or written about is usually, especially if it's from China, you know, not believable. But what turned me on to this one was kind of reading between the lines. Um, in China, all batteries, all lithium iron phosphate batteries are made with the hopes of selling them into the automotive trade. And then once they make the batteries, they do some cycle tests and they say, yeah, that's good or nope, it's not. And if it's not good, they make it available for other uses. Usually those are called B quality cells and A quality cells are the good ones. 
of course, they're all going to claim their A-quality cells. What I liked about this in the initial marketing um, specifications they came out, they didn't use the term A and B. They called them automotive cells. And maybe I'm naive, but I'm thinking maybe that wasn't a marketer who wrote that. Maybe that was the engineer. Um, for whatever reason, in all honesty, if they were the B cells, as long as they held the power they need to hold, it doesn't matter. Because most of us are going to draw power out fairly slowly, and we're just not going to be slamming power in and out of it quickly. We're not a, a delivery truck trying to go up a hill with a load. We're trying to run a fridge refrigerator for literally days. And it, the way that works, that is well within the abilities of the B cells. So that leads to the next thing. How much power is in one? I wanted to do that test and I didn't want to do the test the way I've seen it done on the internet. Uh, people will hook it to an inverter and turn on like a big heat device, like a paint stripper gun, and blast the power out of it. Well, that's not how you're going to use it, right? You know, you're going to use it slow. So I decided to put this little thing together. A couple power resistors, a few power resistors, and a heat sink. And I uh, just hooked this up to the battery and let it drain the battery down. Let's do that now. Okay, let's check, start by checking the voltage. Set my meter for DC volts, give it a look, and what do we have here? 13.22 with a load on it. And what's the load? Well, we'll set for amps. And hook on there, and we see that it's drawing six and a quarter, six and a third amps. Well, we can plot this out, and we can wait, and um, it'll only take about, oh, I don't know, what, 18 hours? So get yourself a drink. <laughs> I'm joking. I did this test before. I ran it for the whole cycle all the way down, uh, plotted the curve, and uh, figured out the area under the curve. And all in all, by the end of it actually shutting itself down at just under 10 volts, and the BMS shut itself down, it produced 108 amp hours. Well, that's pretty good for a 100 amp hour battery, so I'm happy with that. And like I said, it's not new right out, out of the box. This one's had some cycle life. So from that point of view, I think it's a fine battery. Um, it's packaged up kind of nice. It's in a group 31 case, which is a standard case, so you can get a mount for it very easily. It's got some very nice terminals here. They're brass, uh, screw top, or you can clamp on the regular old lead type, uh, which might be handy if, depending what you're replacing. It's got these little deals on the side, a um, couple USB uh, ports. You know, that's always nice, right? Um, this, which is a way to get right to the terminals, and a switch that just turns on these other two things. Um, honestly, never would use these myself. I just ignore them. So, should you buy one of these? Well, the price alone makes me want to buy one. Obviously, I did. Uh, with this price, it's, it's just about the same price as buying uh, raw cells and your old BMS and putting it together, except you don't have to bother. How do you harm these things? Well, if any given cell is charged over a certain point, and usually that's measured in voltage, of course, the cell will vent and fail. Um, that's the job of the BMS. And I don't really think there are any BMSs out there that don't do a decent job of that. So the BMS, we're going to hope, protects it from overcharging. There's also something called low current overcharging where if you charge this thing like a lead battery, where you don't go over the 14.6, which is usually, you know, where these things have problems, you don't go to the point where the BMS actually shuts down the cells, but you just hold it at a high voltage and trickle power into it, you will damage these. Um, that's what my bank manager's for, and there's no battery in the world that I know of that has protections like that has. You can destroy these by trying to charge them when they're below their minimum temperature. 
This is supposed to have uh, a shut off uh, that will shut it off when it gets below the minimum temperature. And this is the part that concerns me. Uh, it's hard to get a straight answer. I've asked a few questions to the manufacturers, but since I'm not doing like an official review, I didn't really have any weight and I didn't want them to treat me special. I'm just a guy who bought the battery with my own money. So I got from them that it shuts down at 10 below Celsius, which is below freezing. And usually you don't want to be charging lithium batteries below freezing because you can kill the cells. So it's nice that the BMS has that feature that shuts it down. But why 10 degrees Celsius below freezing? Why isn't it shutting down at, you know, freezing at zero Celsius? I can only assume that they're using a doped lithium iron phosphate cell that has some protection. Or I have to assume that they chose the wrong BMS for this battery. And I, I can't answer that question. So if you needed to use this in the cold, you're either going to have to take the risk or you're just going to have to buy a different battery. But if you're living your life right, if you're not exposing your batteries or yourself to freezing cold temperatures, I do recommend the Tropics. This could be the battery for you. It is okay to discharge a lithium at these low temperatures. It's just you can't apply charging current to them at the low temperature. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you get one of these uh, and you like it, write down in the comments, you know, that it worked for you. If it didn't work for you, oh, please, write in the comments that you didn't, you know, it work for you. If you took one and tried to charge it in freezing temperatures, save everybody else and put it in the comments, please. But all in all, I think this is a good device. I've recommended it to friends. I have one friend that has six of them in his boat and he's happy as a clam. He's been doing it with these batteries for, geez, gotta be six, eight months now. Um, like I said, I own a couple of them. This one's gonna go in my parents' camper because I don't wanna haul it back to the boat in the Dominican Republic. And that'll give them, you know, a little extra gas tank as it were. But uh, I think this is a good choice and it's reasonably priced, it's available, and um, it's in our Amazon uh, affiliate link below. We'll get a few dollars if you buy it there, but buy it anywhere you want if you find it. It's good to use the Amazon link because as you see, I can't even think of pronouncing the name of this thing. I don't know why they chose that. Pup, it's not even pronounceable. There's no vowels in it. Uh, but this one seems to be a good one. Buy from Tempest.